and welcome to Chair Interval Training, brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs, which you can get on your Spectrum Cable TV on Channel 5 or on the internet at their YouTube channel, Community Access Yellow Springs. Our co-sponsor is the fabulous Yellow Springs Senior Center, and I will be your host and instructor today, Lynn Hardman, friendly neighborhood silver sneakers teacher. Um, hey, folks. If you're joining us for the first time or for the 51st time, it's been over a year, we would like you to exercise safely wherever you're at, actively to the best of your ability. So to that, consult your physician before you start any new program or if you notice changes in your body and your abilities that you don't have a good explanation for. And, you know, make a note of it when you see your doctor. All right. So. Make sure you got a safe, free of clutter environment to exercise. I've got some music. And today we're going to use a handy dandy hand weight, otherwise known as a jug of liquid. Screw the lid on tight. If you fill it all the way, you can maybe get up to 10 pounds in, a, in an old laundry jug and a rubber ball. If you don't have any of that, no worries. We're going to warm up gradually modify exercises that I suggest if you like and just do your best and whenever you need to take a rest. You can do the entirety of the workout in your chair or on your feet but do stay close enough to use the chair as a safety check or a balance check because we're going to work on balance and agility and coordination and more. So let's go. So, you can be right behind your chair, or right in your chair, or on the right side, or on the left, but do keep it within your reach. And do try to use your best posture, elongating your spine, which makes our movements easier and our breathing too. And that's one of the goals of this regular program. <sighs> Exercise works best when you do it. And the regularity is much more important than probably any other thing about your exercise. The regularity and the appropriate pace and intensity for you. And only you know that. So do be mindful. And we're going to suggest on a scale of 1 to 10, one being the lowest intensity possible and 10 being way too much, maximal. Shoot for a happy medium of four to perhaps seven. And to be able to talk while moving. Any sharp, sudden shooting pains means stop, soothe it, shorten the range of motion, or skip it. All right, we can march in place, see how that feels today. If you want, we can march around our chair or in our chair. We can go the other way. Just for fun. We can widen out our march. And I'm going to stay in front of the chair, but please, you stay where you can touch it behind or to the side and see it. But I want you to be able to see my feet. We're going to just rock side to side. We do a very similar warm up because the routine and the regularity of a simple but effective warm up might be the most important part of your ability to exercise at a slightly higher intensity. So we're really going to focus on shoulders and hips and gradually getting our blood circulating and our heart rate gradually increasing and our breath our breath rate also gradually increasing <sighs> you can make these shoulder circles big arm circles or little you can make your bend in your hips big or little up to you let's see if we can open and close thumbs back pinkies forward a little bit of a rotation through the shoulder as we open and close our chest and shoulders. Breathe. Ideally, in through your nose and out through your mouth. 
easy does it. All right, a little trunk rotation. Pulling the navel in, lifting the crown of the head up. Just navigating our full, safe, comfortable range of motion, little by little. Because every day it's a little different. All right. Let's see, marching it out. I want to preview a couple patterns that we'll use today. One is very simple. It's a single, single, double. If you can touch your chair, and I'll show you. At the side, it'll allow you to lift your knees without bonking that chair. And we can do a single, single, double. Single, single, double. Now we kind of balance a little longer on that double. So if you need a balance check, you've got your chair, you can keep one finger on it at all times. Or you can tap your toe down. Those are both really good ways to check your balance. We could do this single, single, double at tempo, but we could also try it a little faster with short range motion. Just sort of single, single, double. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. On the singles, I'm just pedaling through my feet. On the double, I'm balancing with that knee a little higher. So we can do the single, single, double in a number of different ways at two different paces. That'll come up later. And we could also do a march, two, three, lift. We can lift our toe in front like a little kick. March, two, three, lift. Or we could do a march, two, three, lift, two, three. March, two, three, lift. a little longer. We're not going to add speed to this, but we will add a little brain game. And we can also lift our leg behind us. We can also use our chair for our balance check. We can also lift our leg to the side. And so those are the patterns we'll use today. We're going to continue to warm up with some dynamic stretches in our chair. So as you transition to your chair, if you're not already there, please get your feet close to the chair legs and hinge your hips back, but keep your head and chest up. Keeping those feet, all parts of both feet, digging into the floor and activating your glutes by squeezing them forward and together will take a load off your knees and strengthen your hips. All right, once we're seated, this is the best place to get a sip of water. Not of that, but of this. <laughs> I don't want to sip my laundry soap. <laughs> anyway, as we get things down low, reminder, step to the side, mindfully brace with your abdominals to protect your back, and get things down low like your water. Okay. Now, let's get some movement in our ankles. Just tapping our toes, sitting right at the edge of your seat, please. Sitting tall, and wrists, you can tap. Keep the heel of the hand on the thighs and just tap. Good, now take your toes and fingers out and in. You can lift the hands in the air and rotate gently through your shoulders. And your chest, you can slow it down if that feels better. Go at your own pace. Good, all right. Let's walk those toes and heels out. And with the knees and toes pointing the same direction for proper alignment of your knee joint, you can do a gentle inner thigh stretch, hinging forward but keeping your back long and strong and gently opening your thighs. You can also stretch through the back of your shoulder, if that feels good. Kind of feels like you're taking your shoulder from your back pocket to your front. Good. Okay, walk those toes and heels together. Take 
Take a deep breath, open your chest, lift your chest, and exhale. Interlace your fingers and curl your spine. Excellent. Lift your hands up overhead and climb a rope. Nice and slow. If your shoulder does not like to extend overhead, you can do it with your shoulders. But just introduce a gentle lateral flexion of your spine, stretching the side muscles of your torso. Excellent. Now, let's stretch out the legs right and left. Pull your navel in and see how it feels to stick your foot in the air. Show me the sole of your foot. And let's push with both arms today. Breathe at your own pace. Feel that dynamic stretch as you dorsiflex your toes. Pull your navel in and lift your heels. Let's see how it feels to do it. Flex point, flex on the right and the left. Both wrists and one foot at a time. We never lift both feet off the ground at the same time when we're seated because it's a stress on the low back. Excellent. Let's take a little stretch on that right hamstring, low back a bit, and support here on the left lap as you inhale up. Keep the spine nice and long and hinge forward. Not too much. We're just getting ready for more work or play. <laughs> Lift your toes up towards your nose, fingers too, and then point them down toward the ground. We'll have time for a more thorough stretch at the end. Pull the navel in, draw the knee toward the chest, and draw big circles with your right toes one way, and then the other. Excellent. And let's get that same series of stretches on the left. First the hamstring, sitting tall, supporting on the right left, hinging forward more than down. Gently lift the toes and fingers. Ah, feel that good stretch. And then push toes and fingers down. Wrists and ankles are very important joints to limber up for our independent living. Drawing that knee closer to your chest, drawing circles with your left toes this time, one direction and then the other. Please note, if it hurts your hip or lower back, you can wiggle your ankle down on the ground. Really, just trust your instincts, trust your body, and do it your way, but just do it very regularly. <laughs> okay, are you ready? You can move in your chair or in the air. We're gonna do our single, single, double at different speeds with different moves. Take it at your own pace. I'm gonna check my music and encourage you to get another sip of water if you'd like. It finally stopped raining, so I was in the garden all morning. I think it made me thirsty. It's a good thing. All right, we are ready. How much is left here? Boom, all right. Situate yourself, if you please, over on the right side. And just like we did in the warm-up, we're gonna do a little knee lift at tempo. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. Best posture. Able to see and touch your chair. Using our cross-crawl arms, if you please, or opposite arm as the leg. Excellent. Keep the spine supported by bracing, but breathing. Bracing with your abdominals, that is. All right, let's try this one more time, and then I think we could try it a little bit faster. Pedal those feet. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. Lift your knee up on that double. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. Do you want to take a trip around your chair? I mean a journey, not a trip. Single, single, double. You can stay put. 
or navigate clockwise two times if you like. <laughs> if you have room. And then let's just stay put. Would you like to go counterclockwise? If so, take your time. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. How about two times? Around. This feels funny. <sighs> We're back where we started. Good, shake a leg. How are you doing with your intensity? One to 10 scale? Say it out loud, say it proud. <laughs> you gotta be able to talk. Okay, let's take that pattern, single, single, double, back to tempo. Let's move with our hamstrings. So, stay up behind your chair, but I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. That's a hamstring curl. So behind your chair, sort of a hip width or wider stance and a soft mini squat. Single, single, double, single, single, double. Single, single, double. Now lift your chest, single, single, double. And you've got an opportunity here to move with your arms however you like. I'm gonna row and focus on opening my chest. I think it's a good movement for most of us, unless it hurts you. And if you need to have one finger on the chair for balance, do it. So we're using our rear muscles in our lower body and our upper body. Good. If you need, you've got your toe you can check your balance with. I have to do that occasionally. Single, single, double. We're doing it at tempo. If you want to try it faster, let's think about that. I think you have to keep your feet on the ground. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. So rock, rock, lift. Rock, rock, lift. Rock, rock, lift. We're not gonna walk around the block with this one. <laughs> we might kick something. Single, single, double. So we're balancing on that double. You can always go back to tempo if you like. Or just rest. Do your rest. Two more, if you please. And then just shake it like. Let's come over here to the left side. Just because we haven't been here yet. <laughs> and let's take that single, single, double. Let's use a little kick. Like you're skipping work. Uh, skipping work. Skipping rope. Single, single, double. Single, single, Double, and if you want, you can pretend you've got that rope. Single, single, you can introduce a little, sort of a skippy action without jumping, but just pumping your legs a little bit, which also pumps your heart rate up. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. Now, if you want to get fancy with your jump rope or imaginary jump rope, we could try a little hook on that double. Single, single, round the outside. Single, single. Oh, I lost my jump rope for that hook. Just a little coordination challenge. We're not gonna do this one fast with the hook. So can you see that? I'm gonna come a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing with my foot. Single, single, crossing over. Single, single, hook. Single, single, hook. It's hard for me to coordinate my arms while I do that, but I have, I, I concentrate. <laughs> I can do it. Okay, getting back to my regular place. We could do this 
jump rope at tempo. Maybe one more time. And then let's think about it. Maybe fast without the hook. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. Did you ever do jump rope games when you were a child? Did you ever play red hot pepper? Try it just as fast as you can go. <laughs> Take a rest. How are you doing on your one to ten perceived exertion? I can't hear you. <laughs> Hopefully you're doing well. We're going to try it one more way with hip abduction. So you'll want to be in behind your chair using it. You'll want to stay in your slightly athletic mini squat. Hip width or wider. And dorsiflex your feet double. And this will activate your hip abductor muscles. Brace and breathe with those abdominals. You can do one arm away from the leg. Or you can do both arms. You don't need them for a balance check. Single, single, double. Breathe. We could do this at tempo one more time. Or we could keep our feet down and do it fast on the singles. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. Kind of like feels like a penguin move. I'm going to come out so you can see what I'm doing with my feet. Single, single, double. Single, single, light on your feet. Balance. How about four more times if you can? Balance. Woo! That, I felt that in my hips. And I got my heart rate up. I hope you did too. Before we transition to our chair for some strength work, let's get a calf stretch. Now that those muscles and tendons and ligaments are nice and warm. And I was using my calves a lot with that uh, bouncy-ish, quicker pattern. I don't know about you. So just take a moment, maybe 30 seconds, to paste your heel on the ground behind you and lean forward. Ease in and out of those stretches and try the other leg. Pasting the heel on the ground, pointing the toes pretty much the same direction, straight ahead. We'll get the back of the lower leg and the heel, the Achilles tendon and the bottom of our foot to stretch. Woo! Warm. Let's have a seat. And as we do, I don't want you to do diddly squat. I want you to do squat. <laughs> squat once or squat a lot, but do your best. Get your heels close to the chair, head and chest lifted, hinge your hips back as you bend your hips, knees, and ankles. Take your feet in the floor and squeeze. You can go down with slow control for best strength effect and come up with a little power. Squeeze your gluteals as you drive the hips forward and up. And then when you're ready, settle down. Take your time, please, as you step to the side, lean to the side, and get some refreshing water. I'm a little confused about my time frame today. I have a a brother coming to town to visit me right after I do this or so go for a hike in the Glen and then get some food together. I haven't seen him in over 18 months, so here's to being able to get out and about safely. We're going to use both of our strength tools, so go ahead and take your time and go ahead and grab your ball. And your weight. We're going to start at the front edge of our chair with an inner thigh exercise. And then we'll be doing a lower body exercise. I'm sorry, an upper body exercise. But just keep your weight on your lap for now. Be a little closer than your knees and squeeze that ball. I want you to drive your heels down into the ground and feel the hamstring strengthening too. 
Of course, immediately you feel it in your inner thighs. Peel your toes off the floor and you're strengthening your shin muscles. These are all really good exercises. Do as many of those as possible. Those body parts, embrace with your abdominals and squeeze your gluteals. I know that's asking a lot, but stay tuned. Keep your mind in tune with your body. Now, here's the upper body and midsection portion of this. So let that weight hang like it's a suitcase because you might want to go for a travel now that you can if you're fully vaccinated and masking up on public transportation. Okay, so now we're going to tilt to the side and then lift that suitcase up to our armpit area. If you want, you can combine that suitcase lift lateral flexion of the spine with your thigh squeeze, driving your heels down, hamstring strengthening, peeling toes up, shin strengthening, squeezing your glutes, hip strengthening, pulling your navel in, abdominal strengthening, total body movement and try one more on this side and let's switch if you want if you can so straighten up tilt to the left lift tilt squeeze if you like add back that ball squeeze there's a lot going on here you could certainly do part of this exercise, all of this exercise, or none of this exercise. If it hurts, just wait 30 seconds and we'll be done with this. And then we're going to do another all body exercise. Woohoo! <laughs> I like to make the most of our time exercising. Besides, in real life, most movements are compound, we're moving multiple body parts and that's called functional fitness all right take the ball please set it carefully between your feet and put your right foot on top just rest your weight on your lap and squish that ball see how that feels good so with this leg press, we're strengthening hamstrings and gluteals. Also, you feel your abdominals start to pull in as you do that. All right. We're going to add a movement here. It's called a cross chop. We're going to maybe cradle the weight with our right hand, hold it with our left. And we're going to rotate and lean back. And then we're going to press that jug up to the right. You can make a small movement, and then as you do that cross chop, you're going to drive your right foot into the floor, into your ball. So we're leaning back and rotating, and then coming up and chopping, getting a good chest and shoulder extension as we work our abdominals and our right leg with that leg press. This is a pretty big movement, so we're gonna finish up. When you feel like you've used all that up on that side, set your uh, weight on your right lap and switch the ball to your left foot, please. Take your time and get it situated to where you feel you can really drive with some force as you breathe into that left leg press. Okay. We're also giving our upper body a little bit of rest while we work that lower body, which tends to have more endurance. All right, now, cradling with your left hand and holding predominantly with your right, with your weight. If you have two weights, you can do that. If you have just one, you can do that. We're going to pull the navel in and lean back and look over our right shoulder, rotating, driving up to the upper left corner. You can make it a short movement, but pull the navel in and drive the foot down as you drive the weight up. Control. Breathe. These 
have been pretty big exercises using our whole body. So we're going to be finishing this up maybe just four more reps or whatever you can do to the best of your abilities. Don't forget to drive that foot into the ball. And relax. Okay. Let's see. I want to get this ball over to the side with my foot. And get the ball up and tuck that weight. Carefully supporting the spine under the chair where it won't get under my feet. And I'm going to step to the side and get another sip of water. My curious cat <laughs> is probably going to join us. <laughs> All right. We're going to do our single, I'm sorry, our March 2 3 lift 2 3 pattern. But I want you to play a little brain game after we get our body doing that pattern. We're going to add in an alphabet list game. So you might think of three names that start with A when you do the three lifts on your right knee. And you might think of three names that start with B. And just continue through the alphabet like that. Do your best. First, we'll get our body working. Whether you're in the chair or standing on your feet in the air, best posture. And you'll just do march two, three, and lift. Let me try it. One, two, three, and lift. I still don't got it. Lift. Two, three, march, two, three, lift, two, three. Sometimes, yeah, this old girl, it's easy to <laughs> get her mixed up. Actually, one of the things that I find challenging about this job, but also fun, is moving while talking. And that's what I'm gonna introduce to you. So these little challenges done safely with minimal risk are really good neuroplasticity trainers. That is training your brain to have stronger and more connections. So if you're on your feet, let's start that pattern again. Make sure you can see and touch your chair. Put your thinking cap on and lift your right. Two, three, march, two, three, and left. Two, three, you got your chair for your balance check. Or, look, come on, no hands, you could tap your toe down. Mark, or lift, two, three, march, two, three, lift, two, three. Now put your thinking cap on and give me three A names Archie, Ann, Amanda, B names Bert, Bacharach, Brian. C names, Chuck Charlie, Calvin. <laughs> D names, you don't do it. E names, Engelbert, Ernie, <laughs> Ernest, Frank, Francis, Felicia, George, Georgiana, G, I don't know, <laughs> H, Harold, Hans, yeah. One, two, three, what are we on here? John, Jacob, Jingleheimer, that was an easy one. Karen, Kathy, Chris, Lynn, Linda, Louise, that was an easy one. Mountain, Mary, Marianne, Mariana, that was cheating. And Nancy, Nan, Ned. Woo. Oh, Octavio, uh, like others. Wait, take a break. How'd you do with our brain game? Huh? I hope you were doing it. Don't just listen to me. Do your own thing. Okay. Are you ready to try this with a different part of our body? Maybe in behind our chair, we could do this with our hamstring curls. Starting with our hip with soft athletic stance. Let me see. Lift that right heel. Three, two, one. March, two, three. Okay, this time, Let's think of numbers with our brain game. But get your body going. Let's think of oh, counting by threes. So three, six, nine, continue. 12, 15, 
18, I can't hear you. 21, 24, 27, keep going. 30, 33, 36, keep going. 39, 42, 45, keep going. 48, 51, 54, keep going. 57, 60, 63, you got it, let me hear you. All the way to 100 if you can, but it won't be exact, right? I think it'll be 99 but I skipped out. So you keep going. Are you there yet? Almost. Keep talking, keep thinking, keep moving. Last one. Or thereabouts. How are you feeling? Did you feel that in your hamstrings and glutes a little bit? I hope so. Come on over here to the left side of your chair. Now let's do this again. This time, we're gonna try using our glutes with a hip ex extension lift. Two, three, so the leg is somewhat straight and you have to pull your navel in to support your lower back and pulse rather than swing or kick. You could also, you could also press your heel back, press, 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 but activate those glutes, lift, two, Three, superwoman or superman, arm or arms, if you can. Pull that navel in strong, pulse, little movements control, not swinging or arching the back. Pull the navel in, you got this. Use your superpowers. You could use your chair. You could touch your toe down, but activate those glutes. Lift your crown of your head up, 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 and away to the sky. I got to play a lot of superhero games with my lovely grandson while I was in New York City. <laughs> oh, all right, this is hard work. Let's finish up one more on the left side. And maybe loosen up your lower back if you felt that with a little penguin stretch. Tuck your tailbone under, elbows forward. Tuck your tailbone, or stretch it back, elbows back. Ah, that feels good. Okay, I think we have time to do that one more time. And I wanna get in behind our chair again and use our hip abductors. Starting with our hip width soft stance. Now you can take a break whenever you like. We're gonna try that. Lift two, three on the right. Lift two, three, march two, three, lift two, three. Keep that foot dorsiflex, pull that navel in. Use the chair if you need. Stretch the crown of the head up. And let's try a little forward backward game. Let's think of three letter words. Simple words, they could be names or pronouns or just words. And spell them forward and backwards. So A, N, D spells and D, N, A is your, you know, your chromosomal stuff. <laughs> try some more. Your own three letter word, okay? No, let's see, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Oh, I lost my pattern, too much thinking. If, I, F, S, S, F, I, B, U, T, oh, T, U, B. Oh, my hips are hurting. H, I, P, how are yours? P, I, H, woo! It's time to take a break, stretch those hips before we sit a stretch and do some more strength work. Mm, mm, mm. If you put your weight into your right leg and straighten the knee without locking it, you can stretch by pushing into that hip gently and then getting our hips in our chair is our chance to do another squat, a set of squats. I'm gonna take my feet wider this time and toe out just ever so slightly and see how that feels. Reaching my hips back. 
with this wider stance, it might make your knees feel better or worse, but you could try it. It definitely uses more inner thighs and it feels different. It's probably using the, the heads of the quadriceps a little differently, so it's worth a try. You could try those different foot positions to see what works best for you. Okay, I need a sip of water if you'd like one. Please take your time, step to the side, lean to the side. Have a sip. We're gonna do a couple of sets of exercises that are all body that might be a little challenging. So remember, go at your own pace, do the parts that work best for you, modify, adapt, or sit it out. It's okay. We're gonna do some kettlebell swings with squats and some one arm rows with the option to do a lunge. That's a big movement, so it's not gonna be appropriate for everybody. I understand that. I also understand that you will go at your own pace and do what works best for you. We'll need our weight only on the ball. You can set your hips halfway back in your chair so that your heels can touch the chair. You might need a wider stance to reach down with your weight. Just let that weight hang and pull your navel in a brace. Dig your heels in and hinge slightly forward. What we're gonna do is with our arms bent, we're gonna bring that weight in front of us. If it feels good, we're gonna lengthen our arms a little bit more. If it feels great, you can make a straight line lift. Dig your heels in and pretend to get up or get up. So you could be doing this kettlebell swing or weight lift front lateral raise in your chair with your arms bent because closer to your body is easier or you could be doing it with the squats or you could be stopping that's a pretty big exercise all right i think i want to show you one time what it looks like from the side you don't have to do it now just so you get the idea so when i say hinge forward back long and strong and bent arms that's a little easier or straighter arms or doing the whole thing okay for your future sets that I'm sure you'll do whenever you have the energy and time all right let's do a one-armed row combined with the option to do a little lunge you can lunge in your chair, scooching over till your right hip is off the right side of your chair. Jug or weight in your right hand. Again, just let it hang, brace with your belly, hinge halfway forward, reach, and roll. Think of squeezing your shoulder blades together and pointing your right elbow up to where the ceiling meets the wall behind you. Breathe. Now, if you feel froggy, Take your heels in. If that doesn't work for you, stay seated. If you can, do it up, do it down, do it to the best of your ability. Focus, squeeze those shoulder blades together, strengthening upper back, rear deltoids or shoulders, biceps, and grip strength. And then your lower body is working a lot. <laughs> And oh, that was hard work. If you want, you can join me on the other side. If you have pain on one side and it's not working for you, don't worry. You don't have to do the same number of exercises on the left as the right, it's okay. But with that left hip slightly off the left side of your chair, brace with the abdominals, hinge slightly forward, let the arm hang, row, breathe, squeeze the elbow back, shoulder blades together. If you want, dig your heels in, test that lunge, if it's not working, stay seated. If it's working, give it your best, knowing you can sit down and use your chair 
as your balance check whenever you need it. Maybe just a couple more. This is a big all body exercise. Woo. Okay, we're done with that weight. Stepping to the side, leaning to the side. Tuck it away. We're going to have the option to do a, a gentle balance exercise, but I want to show you how you can do it with the ball in your seat for hip abductors. With the right palm on the ball, with the option to do some grip strength, you can press that ball on the outside aspect of the thigh, the right thigh, and resist with that thigh. So it looks like I'm going nowhere. This is an isometric exercise. So that's why I'm overemphasizing the breathing. You've got to exhale as you squeeze the air out of the ball. When we do isometric exercises, it's really not productive to hold your breath. But we're bracing with our abdominals as we exhale. We're pressing and strengthening outer hip and thigh muscles and, and ligaments and connective tissues. And if you're squeezing with your hand, you're improving grip strength. And of course, we can try it on the other side. This is the seated version. So continue in your seat if you want. If you want to work on balance safely to minimize the risk, you've got your chair there. You're going to dorsiflex your left foot up and extend that arm and press as you open the space between your legs or abduct from your hip. Keep the foot dorsiflexed, keep the body stable, breathe, add that grip strength if you want. Maybe just one more on this side if you want to try it standing on the other side. This is deceptively hard. So do your best. On the right side of your chair, you can use your left hand. Pull your navel in, pull your right, right toe up, and then open the space between your legs. Pressing against the outer thigh, squeezing with your grip strength if you like. Pulling up with the crown of your head. So there's a lot going on here just to try to stand still while moving one leg and pressing that ball. And I feel it in my standing hip just as much as I do on my lifting hip. We're done with the ball. We're done with our strength exercises. If you're on your feet, you could take this moment to get an excellent calf stretch as we cool down and get our final stretch. Locking that right heel back, leaning forward. Now that we're good and warm, you might want to try a bent knee calf stretch. So stay where you're at. I'm going to move so you can see what I'm doing. Ideally, you could use a wall or a sturdy pillar or door frame. Here's our straight knee calf stretch. Press your heel to the ground, leaning forward. Static, not bouncy. And if you shift your weight, you can do a slight bend in that knee, still pushing the heel to the ground, or our bent knee calf stretch. It's a very subtle difference, but there are two main muscles in the lower leg, and that way you get to address them both. And likewise, you want to try the other leg. Walking it back for the straight knee calf stretch. Pressing heel to ground, leaning forward, taking your time. A good amount of time is like 15 to 30 seconds. You could do it a little longer. But your flexibility needs, have, I've slightly bent that rear knee now. I don't know if you saw that. I encourage you to try that too. Slight bend in that rear knee. Your flexibility needs are better served with regular stretching rather than longer stretching. Just like all of your exercise and 
most of your fitness needs. It's those little things you do regularly with repetition that really add up. In fact, they compound. I have discovered that physical fitness is much like fiscal fitness. <laughs> so I encourage you to keep compounding your interest. All right. We don't have to do a lot of squats, but we do want to try to sit down safely. So, my friend, let's just breathe for a bit. And then we'll breathe mindfully as we stretch a little bit longer. All right, so if you want to scooch back in your chair, check our music here. Let's see where we're at with this. In your seat with your spine supported. Relax. Mm -hmm. Today, as we breathe in, breathe out at our own pace, I'm going to encourage you to use a, um, I call it a body scan. As you're breathing, each time you inhale, starting at the tip of your head, down to the tips of your toes, slowly, methodically, Focus on an area, and if you feel tension or discomfort there, let your breath kind of soothe it, and as you exhale, let it go. Or at least think about that. Relax. Inhale. Effortlessly energizing your body with the oxygen. And notice your brow, or your face, or your eyes, or your jaw, if there's any tightness, tension there. Let it go. As you continue to breathe at your own pace, inhale, soothe your neck and your shoulders. Any tightness or tension there, let it just roll down off your shoulders and back as you exhale. Continue to inhale. Notice your chest and your torso. Send that life-giving oxygen to your entire body, all of those precious internal organs. If you have any discomfort or dysfunction there, think of how the oxygen is coming, entering every cell, aiding your body's ability to heal. As you continue breathing, notice your hips or your lower back and thighs. If there's heaviness, let your breath lighten it. discomfort soothe it with your with your breath and your mind notice your limbs your arms your hands your fingers send that soothing breath to the tips of your fingers and as you exhale let your Discomfort radiate out of your fingers. And likewise with your lower legs, maybe your knees. Send any achiness down, down, down to the ground and let it radiate out of your toes. <laughs> with our mind and our breathing practice, we can, with regularity, actually help comfort and ease some of our chronic pain, some of our um, degenerative conditions. Of course, the human condition is, you know, one that feels and senses, and pain is one of those things. And so 
we can help it, but um, you know, to to tell you that you would with this breathing and exercise have no pain would be a bunch of hooey. <laughs> but I hope that you find some comfort with our regular exercises and with your regular practice of breathing and finding new and different ways to stimulate your mind while you stimulate your body. As things begin to open up and as more people are able to get vaccinated, I think we're going to have a lot more opportunities to be social and engage again. Relax out of that and ease that left leg in. Before we get the right side, let's face forward and get a chest opener. Breathing in, expanding the lungs, opening shoulders, chest, a gentle opener of the spine with a slight arch if it's within your comfort zone. And then exhale as you push and curl the spine, chin and tailbone, gently curling forward. Finish off, turning the other way, hinging forward slowly, mindfully, easing that right leg back, slowly, mindfully, sitting tall, let that right knee drift down. Ah, I always feel better after we exercise. If you don't feel better after you exercise, it's probably an indication that you may have worked a little bit outside of your comfort zone or something's going on with your body. Listen to your body. Listen to your common sense. Write down notes when you go to your physician or your healthcare provider, you know, like advocate for yourself. And sometimes having a little notepad helps you to not only remember, but to document like, when did this happen? How, when did this start? How am I feeling? Little things. It doesn't have to be like a journal, but it could be a journal. Anyway, I hope you out there are taking care of all your health needs and feeling better about, well, life on planet Earth. <laughs> But wherever you go, keep it safe and simple. You might need to wear your mask in places where there are, say, children. Let's take good care of them and show them. I think the children in and around Yell Springs have been doing an excellent job. I see them wearing their masks and they're just, you know, it's going to be hard. Uh, and we're all going to have to work together to help our community heal in a number of ways. It's been a hard, long time, and mental health is going to be something we better be proactive about. Anyway, bye for now. Keep it safe and simple.